Ayy, so amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official, like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, everything from highlights and stats. You know that we gotta run it back. Whether on the field or the court. You know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire. Uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go. All right, guys, what's going on? This is your boy, Livewire Sports Media. All right, so the WNBA All-Star game has come and gone. And to my surprise, hey, I have to say, I really enjoyed it. Um, the game was exciting. It was intense. It got a little physical in the beginning. Um, you saw Kelsey Plum and Kelsey Mitchell got into it, you know, a little shoving. Then you see Diane Taurasi, Kate McClark playing with a little shove and push. Um, but <laughs> the one thing you can count on is they always going to blitz Caitlin, no matter what. They're going to always blitz Caitlin, no matter what. And it's funny that they was blitzing her because Cheryl Reeves continually, continuously, um, wanted to blitz her and that paid dividends for the team um all-star team because um arike umungwale she had a second half um like no other i mean there was three factors in this game and it all came from the two rookies and arike who was the mvp a few years back and became the mvp this game which she had Five threes in the in the um third quarter, and she um went on um she had twenty one points. I mean she was on fire. At one point, um they wanted to sub Caitlin in for her, and Caitlin said, "Nah, let her cook, let her cook." And see, the thing about it is, people don't understand what a good floor general Caitlin is. But guess what? They all seen it out there. I mean, Angel Reese even jumped up at one time when Caitlin came down the court and was about to pull up for a three. They wanted her to shoot that three. Oh my gosh. And she had, she didn't do well in the shooting aspect. You know, she was um pretty, she didn't shot well from three. I mean, but it's an all-star game. But you know, in regular games, she's hitting that shot. She's taking that shot. But she didn't want to. I think Caitlin just took a back seat to everything and she did what she does. She assisted, which she set a rookie record for assists with 10. Um, Angel Reese set a record for double doubles in the WNBA game and Enrique scored 34 points, the highest points in a WNBA. So those three factors stand out, but make no, no, make no, make no mistake. Caitlin Clark drew a lot of attention. Now, I watched somebody's video last night and I was reading the comment section and a lot of people was talking about Caitlyn wasn't out there having fun. Um, it was like Angel Reese was out there joking around with the vets. But the thing about it is, if you was paying attention to the game and to all the highlights, you could have clearly see Caitlyn was being embraced by a lot of the vets out there, a lot. There was one uh, section where she her, she was commanding a huddle with everybody was listening, like Barnum, all of them. They was like, they, I mean, they really was talking to Caitlin and lo loving on Caitlin. So all this narrative about the vets, uh, Caitlin was standoffish, act like she was scared. It was a bunch of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because the fact of the matter is, let me show you real quick. Does this look like she wasn't having fun? Does this look like she wasn't having fun? So the narrative out there was Caitlin wasn't having fun. She was acting like she's scared and all of this here. But one thing you could count on, she was out there doing her thing. And I'm going to show y'all some clips, you know, which I mean, I really enjoyed the game. It was for more all sense of purposes, I wanted Team All Stars to beat 
Team USA. Because they was out there. You could tell they was mad. You could tell they was mad. They was upset. But let me let you to listen to um, Cheryl Miller in the, in, the, um, in the huddle. I'm having fun. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having fun. Now she said she was having fun. She she doesn't know what she was doing. I beg to differ for that. So I'm gonna let y'all listen to it again, and then I'm gonna play you another clip of her drawing up a play. I'm having fun. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having fun. Nonetheless. Now you hear that she say, "I'm having fun. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having fun." But I'm here to tell you. She knew what she was doing. Check this out. Sandy Brondello has Here's talked about how much she has yeah. worked on I need that. A big take of the I need a big take of the ball out here. All right, I need Kaylin on the opposite side, opposite elbow. I need you to step out, set a ball swing. Get into Kaylin, right? I want a pick and roll at the top of the key. I don't, you've already passed the ball in. Pick and roll with you two. On the opposite they need to get Cheryl Miller a whiteboard for those who are visual learners <laughs> like myself like draw this up for me coach the Decker Gubake helping to that see that right there goes to show you a coach. Now, she, one thing about Cheryl Miller, she's old school. You see, she was directing and telling you where to go. Most coaches use whiteboard to draw, draw their position. And like Leo Boston was like, you know, asking her where, and she said, right there, right there. And then you see how she was drawing up a play for Caitlin. <clears throat> Chrissy Sides would never, would never, ever draw up a play for Caitlin. Never draw up a play for Caitlin, say the least. So you could tell the distinction of a real coach and a coach that knows what she's doing. You know what I'm saying? Because Chrissy Sides doesn't draw plays up there. She writes on a chalkboard and she's like, oh, well, feed it into the post and this and, and this and that. Cheryl Miller tell you exactly what she wants. She said, I want a big to inbound the pass. She said, then, Caitlin, I want you over here. But then we're going to do pick and roll with Caitlin, you know what I'm saying, with her and Leo Boston. And, and then she said, I want all my guards to spread out. See, that's how you draw up a play. Because everything they was doing in that game was working. You know what I'm saying? Rather, you can say it's an all-star game, don't take it too serious. Coaching, when you're a good coach, you know what you're doing. Because Cheryl Reeves, on the other side, all she wanted to do was try to lock Caitlin down, didn't want Caitlin to have a big all-star game, you know what I'm saying? But guess what? Caitlin had 10 assists, as always, and she let um, Enrique Umawale cook. Angel Reese came in, and plus... There was an Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark sighting for um, rookie to rookie. So I'm going to let y'all see that. Who gets free to lay it in? Here's Clark thinking about a bomb, the hesitation, the take, the leave. Reese the lay. Clark to Reese. What you've been waiting Everybody was waiting on that. Everybody was waiting on the Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark connection and what, it was, what, what they was going to do. And that play gave Caitlin Clark her 10th assist right there. So, and like I said, I I watch I watch people that are, you know, Angel Reese, you know, fans or YouTube fans, and they write in the comments and stuff. And they and it's always never my thing is I don't have any problem with Angel Reese. I just know what she's a basketball player she is, and I know what Caitlin is, and I know what Caitlin brings to the table. You know what I'm saying? But make no mistake, this U.S. All Star team could have very well went to the Olympics and won. Sitting back and just watching this game, seeing how slow T 
Team USA was, how these young ladies was running them up and down the court, getting them tired. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't keep up. Stewie's old. Tarasi's old. BG's old. You know what I'm saying? Um, Chelsea's old. You know, you, you got old legs on there. DT, she's kind of up there. It can't really move too much. I'm going to tell you this. They don't have no real guard play unless you allow D, um, Alyssa Thomas run the point. But they're gonna run, let they're gonna let um Chelsea run the point, but she's slow. Don't no teams is going to run the hell out though, and they people could say, well, they're gonna win goal. Yeah, they might win goal, but hell, they might not. But you can't tell me that the twelve team, the twelve players on Team USA is any better than Team All Stars, or any other the players that they, they even get select for the All Star team. You can't tell me that. Because I guarantee you, if you had, if if you had that team, Team WNBA playing in the Olympics, guess what would happen? They would have win. They will win because guess what? Angel Reese is relentless on the board. Caitlin is going to be the floor general. She's going to get everybody fed. They're going to run pick and rolls. They're going to run up and down the court. They'll be able to run. They can say, yeah, the game is physical, but guess what? They will adapt easily especially through tryouts this is go this go to show you that WNBA really f itself with the selection of the committee because honestly Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark should have been on that team and they would have been able to give young legs they have younger legs you have these old legs out there that you know they don't they ain't go they're not gonna run and they're gonna get beat up, man. This I'm gonna tell you, Team USA better get ready. Cause these teams ain't playing with them. Now, I'm gonna show you another clip of Jacquel Jones um receiving a pass from Caitlin Clark, which was such a thing of beauty. I mean, Caitlin's passing is second to none, man. She is the best floor general, the best playmaker in the WNBA. I mean, we already know what she can do scoring. But when it's come down to um, distributing the ball, yeah. Can't hit the three. Boston the rebound, getting her first minutes. Clark, the flick ahead. Oh, what a dime from Clark. And Jones lays it in. A gorgeous pass from Caitlin Clark. This is one of the things that makes Caitlin Clark elite at the very top in terms of players in the WNBA when it comes to passing. Head up, throws it only that was a thing of beauty, man. That was a thing of beauty. So my thing is this, man. This All-Star game had everything that it was built up to be. I really enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't expecting much from it. But it did exceed my expectations. And it definitely did raise some eyebrows when it came to the Olympic and Selection Committee. Um, you could tell Cheryl Reeves. <laughs> Still took another L from Caitlin Clark, which is funny to me because she now you can tell her goal now is to beat Caitlin Clark. It's personal with her. It's personal. So the second half of the season when the Lynx do play, um, you didn't even see Nafisha Carla out there playing. So I don't know what the deal with her or if she's going to be able to participate in the Olympic Games. So I don't know. So we'll see about that. But Cheryl Reese took it on the chin again. Chrissy Sides, you need to take notes. Take notes for Cheryl Miller because you never know. She might be the one that's going to be taking your job. And see, if Chrissy Sides was paying attention to this game, she'll know to trust Caitlin in this sense. Trust Caitlin, allow Caitlin to do the things that she does and allow her to be the floor general. If you allow Caitlin to run the show, Y'all, your offense is going to run smoothly, but Chrissy Size don't want to. She want to strong, strong arm her constantly. But like I said before, Caitlin showed you what she was in Iowa. She's showing you what she is in the WNBA. And now, now everybody got to see it. All the players got to see it. You know what I'm saying? She even had, I mean, Caitlin was even embraced by Natasha Cloud. 
her and Natasha Cloud was talking um, Saturday night. Um, I guess now they have each other numbers, so they be texting each other. And make no mistake, make no mistake, after Indiana Fever don't get their shit together by 2025 and 2026, you best believe that a Leo Boston and Caitlin Clark will be going to another city near you. And most likely, it could be Phoenix. It could be Phoenix. I mean, Sophie, uh, Sophia Cunningham was already out there recruiting. Um, I'm sure Donna Taurasi and Brittany Griner probably out there recruiting them. Say, hey, come to Phoenix, play in a good facility. You can take over for me when I retire, BG retire. So you got to think about it. And Caitlin is an unrestricted free agent in 2020, um, 2025. You know what I'm saying? And Boston is a free agent. So if Caitlin's an unrestricted free agent, she don't have to resign. She could go, her and Boston could go wherever they want to go together. And if they decide to continue to play together, you best believe, you best believe Phoenix is going to be calling because you could tell that those girls want to play with Caitlin. Everybody out there wants to play with Caitlin, man. Everybody. They see what she could do on the court. Not just a scoring, but they want to be the recipients of a, a person that could get them the ball. So, in the end of fever, you better get your shit together. Because, um, to be honest with you, you want to order to keep Boston and Clark. You gonna have to fire Chrissy Size at the end of the year to bring a real coach in to bring people to that destination. Because people go, like I said, people want to play with Caitlin Clark. You even see Fly J. Johnson out there giving love to Caitlin, had Caitlin on her line, took a picture with Caitlin and stuff. Um, you see Sue Bird out there loving her up and everything. You know what I'm saying? You see Cheryl Swoops out there looking like a, um, I don't even call what I want to say, but you saw her out there, you know? So Caitlin was out there talking on us, the, talking out there. She was talking to Paige Beckers out there. So everybody, everybody got to see Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese display, but you know, people keep saying that, hey, you know, putting this negative about Kaylin, she was out there just having fun, man. But like I said, I really enjoyed the All Star game, and it was a really good one. I'm, I can't wait to see what the TV views is. Oh my gosh, I think it's going to be elite. Matter of fact, it could be in a two two million range. I really think that. So that'd be another um. Another feather in Caitlyn's hat, you know what I'm saying? So, but once all of this comes out, I'm gonna do a a, a bigger video um, with Caitlyn, her records, um, rookie of the month, tendance, all of this stuff. You know, all the records she broke. So I'm gonna do a, a a whole video. It might be about a 30 minute video to get all of that information in. So stay tuned for that one in the next probably one or two days. So, but. Again, this your boy Live Watch Sports Media, and you know how I do about this time. We out. Hey, so amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official, like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, Everything from highlights and stats, you know that we gotta run it back. Whether on the field or the court, you know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire, uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go.